have some pumpkins after that. You know what time of year is it? That's obviously not. All right. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to the board of directors, regular board meeting, Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. And Vice President McCone, would you please do the slide, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Everybody, please repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Cody, may we have a roll call, please? I'm here. Vice President McCone. Here. Director Mays. Here. Director Statham. Here. Director Suda. Item one, approve the agenda. I need a motion and a second and a roll call vote, please. I move the motion. Second. second. Give it to Director Statham. <laughs> and Vice President McCone. Yes. Director Mays. Yes. Director Suda. Yes. President Huff. Yes. And Director Statham. Yes. Item two, public comment. This is the opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction, which are not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. State law prohibits the board director from discussing or taking actions on items not included on the agenda. Cody, do we have any public comment? Oh, received, uh, one email, um, have no public online, so I'll just go ahead with the one email that I printed and provided for each of you. Um, it's from a Yucca Valley resident in response to encouraging sewer connections. Um, he's recommending a visit and tour of the wastewater facility uh, by all uncooperative parcels, lots, properties that remain unconnected is perhaps a solution for encouraging uh, connection. Thank you. Item three, presentations. Item 3A, Purchase Department Employee Introduction, presented by CFO Tanya Gruel. President, members of the board, staff. Uh, tonight I'd like to introduce the Purchasing Department. I'll uh, start off with Mike Hayward. Uh, he's been employed with the High Desert Water District for 31 years. Um, he was hired back in 1991 as a meter reader. In 94, he was promoted to a buyer slash inventory control worker. In 2004, he was promoted to a buyer of inventory control and supervisor. In 2011, he was promoted to purchasing manager, customer service supervisor. He also is in charge of billing and meter readers. And then in 2018, he was promoted to purchasing and facility manager. And Sadly to say, tomorrow is his last day of employment with High Desert Water District. Um, we tried to convince him to stay longer, but enjoying life and not being under the gun of working and all that, and enjoying his wife and time with his family. Um, and it's been a very pleasure working with you over the years. Definitely will be missed. Um, a new addition to the purchasing department is Vince um, Westover. He's been employed with the High Desert Water District for six years now. And in the short six years, he's had a lot of movement. Um, he was hired as a labor in 2016. A few months later, he was promoted to a field in one. In June of 2018, he was promoted to public service technician two. In August of 2019, he was promoted to lead field service technician. And then in January of 2022, so December um, 12th of 2022, he was on a temporary assignment, helping out customer service at the front desk and dealing with customers. And then on December 12th of 2022, he was promoted to purchasing and which is now his current position and taking over for Mike. And I look forward to working with Vince in the upcoming years. Do you have anything to say? Which one? Either one of you. 
you know, Ed always told me before the board meetings, short is better. But, <laughs> uh, I will say, you know, it's been uh, wonderful 31 years. And, you know, when it started, we just acquired, had acquired, um, got the water limited, and West End was just Valley Water Company. Watched it. Tremendous impact of how the water that we had in the town for the upgrades that we've done in the future. You know, all new tanks uh, in the area, CRP replacement in numerous areas of pipe, and, and we uh, are close to completion of every pipe on this That part of it is our greater future. Fairway and all that should be uh, safe to come there. That should probably get pretty much complete on the town. Yeah. Been through five general managers, eight CFO. Uh, worked with the uh, people that are coming on. We've had over 100 people that have been on. You know, I've always said I started out with, with a small group. <laughs> a family over to type business because it's grown to what it is today. Real proud of the progress we've made. Real proud of the employees, board, and tremendous board over the years. Not much turnover, great woman to work with. And thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to the new challenges and everything this job has to offer. So, a good career. Good to have you aboard. Okay. Yes, please. I, I would just like to say something publicly too. I, I wasn't able to attend Mike's retirement party, so this is an opportunity to. I'd like to just say, really appreciated the, the short time working with you. Um, and Mike is always looking for ways to reduce costs and save money. He's truly a very dedicated employee. And uh, I have nothing but praise for him and really appreciate the efforts I've been together. And look, definitely looking forward to events. Uh, I, I see a lot of talent there. And I think I, as board members, I think probably you all would like to say something. So I'm going to start down here with Director May. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, it has been a great joy and a great pleasure, Mike, to work with you through the last 17 years. And uh, I commend you for all the time savings, cost savings, all of the working together with new staff uh, in different capacities. And I just look forward to hearing about your enjoying of your retirement, traveling, fixing all the jobs that you're going to get done, and maybe even some side jobs that you want to do to fill in the extra time. But uh, come back anytime, we'd love to have you. And uh, we really, really appreciate all that you've done for this district and this community. Thank you, Robert. Vice President McCall. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome, Vince. Uh, Mike. Uh, side jobs. I need some firewood, man. <laughs> I saw some dead trees over the golf <laughs> There, there are. Uh, congratulations on a a great career, and um, hope you have many, many, many years to enjoy you know, whatever you plan to do. Uh, Jennifer could probably use some help over at Little League, right? <laughs> Funny you say that. She was showing me our Facebook yesterday. <laughs> so years ago, I, I was a coach over there. We got a new president. It was Mike, and we were in rookies. And he comes walking over. Oh, I'm the new president. I go, Mike. I think we got this handled. You could leave now. Didn't say a word. Just walk away. <laughs> turn around and walked away. Good times. Anyway, congratulations again. And director, please. Mike, I just want to know if you designated anybody to take over your role after the Christmas lake parade to help me make hot, hot chocolate. Right. <laughs> you know, um, I, I believe I'd be available to help you soon. Wonderful. 
since you have experience, <laughs> you'll do a great job. I'll have time on my hand. And I also want to apologize for missing your party. It was unavoidably detained. No. I'm director say that, please. My gratitude as I I made this party. And so did a lot of other people. I mean, it was a pretty popular event. It's like you've got a lot of friends around here. And uh, I just want to express my appreciation and gratitude for all of the wonderful service that you provided this community and this district and us up here make our jobs a little bit easier for all these years. And wish you just all the best for a great, happy uh, retirement. Program. Vince, good luck. Vince, you have some big shoes to fill. I think you realize that, but I know you. I think you're going to well live up to the job. So I'm really, really pleased. Very good choice. And Michael, Miss, you've always been really cordial and nice to me as a board member from the very beginning, and it was always appreciated. So thank you very much. So, does anybody else have any comments they'd like to say? No, they're probably really happy to get rid of you. It looks Maybe like. You don't think it is, I said so. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> A little bit afraid of the, the, the retirement party was really like he's going away party. So funny and, enough, he told me yesterday, you can't retire. <laughs> it's tough. It's gonna be tough. We had a we had a good working relationship. So I know we've grown grown a lot. Grown a lot over the years. So uh, we always work towards the better man. So. Thank you. I'd like to make a please. I was very impressed as Tanya was sharing about your resume, the promotions that you have received six or seven times. Promoted, you. Good job in filling in for Mike. That's a big shoes, but you want more? Wonderful, wonderful times with you. Thank you. I think we'll go on to the consent calendar. Item four. Items on the consent calendar are acted upon by one motion, unless the board member wishes an item to be acted upon separately, in which case it will be removed from the consent calendar. We have 4A. We have 2022 12 21 regular minutes. We have 2023 0401 regular minutes. And so I would need a motion and a second. I make a move, motion to move the four consent calendar. Second. Director Seda? Yes. Director Suda? President Huff? Yes. Vice President McCone? Yes. Hermes? Yes. Department action items. I'm not seeing any sub. In that, have their department. Right. Department action items, there are none. There are none. Okay. Department information items. For, for information and discussion purpose only, no action will be taken. Uh, this will be presented by Director of District Services. Thank you, President Huff, Directors. Staff, members of the board. So um, I'd like to start off by introducing a consultant, Gary Sturdivan. I think he's at, you know, attending a Cal Warren meeting. So Gary's here to back me up tonight or this, this evening, afternoon, whatever. <laughs> um, I just wanted to start off a little bit with background. Um, as we know, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and California Office of Emergency Services, Cal OES, requires communities and organizations to develop hazard mitigation plans to be eligible for treatment grant assistance before and after a disaster. Our Desert Water District is currently in the process of updating our local hazard mitigation plan. Um, currently, the plan is available for review on our homepage, www.hdwd.com, in its entirety. 
Um, and the plan at this time has been submitted to Cal OES for review. Um, later, I will give Gary an opportunity to elaborate on that. Um, the, the thing I wanted to focus on tonight um, was the plan adoption process. So as I stated before, at this time, we have submitted an updated local hazard mitigation plan to Cal OES for review and approval. The next step is for Cal OES to review it um, and once this review is complete, any revisions and any revisions are made, Cal OES will forward the plan to FEMA for another review and for revisions. Um, once FEMA has approved, the cal approved, Cal OES will notify High Desert Water and the final approval letter of the final approval letter will be pending adoption by the district's board of directors. So the Board of Directors resolution at that time will be sent to Cal OES and Cal OES will submit the resolution to FEMA. And then our consultant, Sturdivant Emergency Management Consulting will send a copy of the final local hazard mitigation plan and resolution to the San Bernardino Office of Emergency Management. Um, so at this time, I would like um, to allow Gary a chance to elaborate any details he might like to add. Gary. Thank you, Ron. Hello, board members and staff. I'm in Sacramento at the Cal Warren meeting, so my connection is a little iffy. I hope you can hear me. Yep. Okay. Anyway, uh, the uh, hazard mitigation plan has been reviewed by Cal OES as it normally is. And as is normal, they sent it back to us wanting some um, changes to the plan and which is very typical anymore. Uh, they have consultants, they don't have people that work for them, they have other consultants reviewing the plans. But once we'll get those fixed, uh, those items corrected that they want corrected and send it back to them uh, probably on the 7th, and then they will uh, automatically uh, uh, adopt it, and then they will send it to FEMA for formal adoption by FEMA. Uh, this is an update on the plan uh, that you had that's five years old now. So this is, a, I believe, the first big update. Uh, we're trying to get under the window that in April 1st of this year. There is a whole slew of laws, the federal laws that take effect, that affect the mitigation plan. Losing you. In those for this time and then do it next time. Am I, losing, am I cutting out? A little bit, but I think you're back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, it's saying uh, popping up on my screen, uh, unstable connection. So anyway, uh, we'll get, uh, I don't know what you heard, uh, but Cal OES is almost ready to approve it. We just got a few revisions and then it will go to FEMA and FEMA within 30 days will approve it also, and you'll have an updated plan. And then it'll come to the board for adoption, and we'll send that uh, resolution back to FEMA, and it'll all be done for another five years. Thank you, Gary. So I believe that uh, includes our presentation. We'll be happy to take any questions after public comment. Is there any public comment online at this time? And we received no email, so none. Thank you. All right, with Director Suda, please. I know you have some questions and concerns. Census information. Hear that, Gary? Frozen. I think he's frozen. Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if he goes up to him. Gary. Maybe turn your video off. Ron, do you want to call my cell phone and then I might be able to hear you? You're coming through clearly right now. Okay. So do we have Rick, a question? I had a question for you. Okay. When are you going to update the 2010 census? information that was updated in the plan for 2020 uh 
you're probably looking at one that it was posted from uh, the first uh, draft on session one through three, but that was updated before it was sent to Cal OES. So the document that we have is not the one that you sent to OES. Apparently not. It should have been. I will need to double check that since there was a mistake made because it should have been. So I need to go back and look and see what we got. Uh, could have been a. Maybe to make sure there wasn't a typo that was missed. Is there a particular area that you were referring to, Director Student? The county of San people as a. What? Where is that? Page twenty-four. Page twenty. Oh, right here. Oh, for okay. Okay. Um, is that okay. is that updated, or is that how the final version went? I'm sorry, you were cutting out really bad. So, was that updated, or there's a question on the version? I I need to double check the version. Um, Gary, it said it states he on page it here, but he didn't update it there. In section one two in the history, it's still referring to the 2010 version of the census. No, we changed that. It is 2020 version of the census. Apparently, um, in demographics, know. it's referring to the 2020. Um, in the history, it's still referring to 2010. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, it, I'll check that to make sure, uh, but I don't think that's there anymore. I think it's 2020. Or... Okay. So, again, I, we're going to have to get together and make sure we didn't have a mistake with the version, but um, Gary may not recognize the paragraph you're referencing. Either way, we'll make sure that it's either corrected or verified. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that. Uh, we'll get that. Uh, before I send it back to you, we have to make sure that it's correct. Okay. On the, the uh, page 10. Page 10, Gary. There, there are okay. typos in there, and it says, High Desert Water District does not approve of any new buildings in the service area. I don't think that's a correct statement. So we don't have approval authority, but we don't care whether there are any new buildings in that area, do we? Well, we issue services. The town is the land use authority that permits buildings. So I don't think it's false if we're stating we don't approve them. I agree. Oh, does it say we do? Yeah. It's, oh, it says, it says we do not, have, we do not approve. It sounds like the water district is against development. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, we'll consider that language. I understand what you're. I understand what you're suggesting. I think what we're stating is that we are not the land use authority who approves new buildings. Okay, that might be a better way to say that. I've got a whole bunch of different corrections here. What if I give them to you? Sure. Yes. For sure, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it uh, is scan those on. Okay. Uh, I'll be with you on this weekend. Okay. After yes. So it's still a, it's still a draft that's been submitted, and revisions and public comment are still uh, okay. part of the process. Um, are we doing anything to try to? Whip up some public interest in it other than posting it on the. We posted it and we posted a survey. Um, we do reach out to some neighboring agencies. Um, typically, from my experience and from Gary's, there, there's very little public um, participation. Um, one person responds to the survey. One, one person responded to the survey. In the past, we used our, PAT, we used our public um, advisory committee. Um, in this in this instance, we weren't required to have um, in person because of COVID. There, 
they're getting ready to remove those restrictions. So moving forward, that will be a new requirement to have a um, in-person public in involvement. Um, and we do have a window that we're trying to get approved before they reenact those restrictions and we have to and if I can, it was also posted in the newsletter. So we have it on our website, I believe on social media and then the newsletter as well. That's something that we could refer to the uh, committee, the uh, public, the patient committee, I forget their name. We always, we always, we always could. We weren't required to. Um, and we were under the gun to get under a certain deadline. Um, but we could always bring it to the public as an information item for sure. Um, but it's still open for comments through the website, correct, Gary? Yes. And, and it says in here somewhere that any comments are not shared because they're private. We can get public comments. Right? Can you respond to that question, Gary? That it states that any public comment are not shared, that they're private? They're, um, they're not, they are shared with the money capital, yes, but they are redacted. To Any name or email address, phone number is all redacted oh, uh, okay. from what you said since you Cal yes. Does that answer? FEMA will know what the comments are. They just redact the personal information, so they're not. It's more anonymous. Plus, you're not confidential. If you're all right with you and the board, I'll get together with you. I think I've got a comment. Or okay. I, I think that uh, that's good. A good recommendation. Good idea. Director Stevens. Director Mays. Had a couple that in the background. Okay. Vice President McCullough. Um, page 69, agenda 53 of the report. Talk about emergency trained across the department. What about board members? Is there anything that we can ever do to assist in the event of an emergency? Don't we get some training? <laughs> did, did you hear, Gary? Uh, no, but the, not really clear. The question is that the section that refers to um, staff training doesn't include the board. Level of training um, is required. There is a elected officials training that should be done in Okay, so maybe something could be in the works to. Bonnie and I are currently um, working on scheduling some staff training, so we could certainly make sure we address sure. that. I mean, even if it came down to, you know, answering the phone or. People, I don't want. I'm uh, thinking for you digging ditches. <laughs> Tony saw me with the shovel. Yeah, he laughed at why, me. Yeah. Said I, I can't operate a shovel. So that's why I'm thinking digging ditches. What do you think, Tony? I saw him put that shovel in and he got about that far into the dirt. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't even give a verbal nod, but maybe. Okay, I can I can live with that. Um, so yeah, a ton of information in here, obviously. But then you get to the meat of it. Page 74 of the agenda, 58. You know, you talk about all these uh, potential threats and hazards. Okay, then we get to about it, the mitigation part. Um, 58, again, 58 of the report, 74 of the agenda, earthquake, flooding, freezing, climate change, wind storms. Then you get to page 
page, well, seven, pages 74 through 78, 70, talks about the amount of money we need. Um, and I added it up, comes to if we were to mitigate all of the threats, 20 million in the next five years, this is called inflammation strategy, 79 of the agenda. The Desert Water District staff will look for ways to obtain hazard mitigation grants. So you would think that by mitigating and protecting ourselves and the infrastructure of the district, that money should be available for that, maybe more money than in other areas. So um, last year we budgeted $250,000 for grant writing to try to get some money. Does any, do we know how much we've spent of that? I say it's less than 100,000, I don't, I don't. Okay, so we've got some money. Maybe to try to get the money together, we need to start searching, we need 20 million bucks. So shouldn't these all be listed on the project plan? Well, okay, that brings up a good question. One of them is the generator. Now, that's been on there for as long as I can remember. And seems like I, I heard about the generator. Actually, what prompted that was something about clean air. We weren't allowed to use that. Does that sound familiar? Okay. Well, maybe now it's not so much about clean air. It's about mitigation so that we have power. In the event of a power loss. So under that category, maybe we'll be successful getting some money. Um, I don't know. Do we have a, a qualifying answer here? Maybe it's something we can look into. And keep in mind that this is a draft, put this together, but this will be the foundation for us to put together a plan. It should go on a project list. It should have, in terms of time period to complete this, yearly budgets to complete it over that time. So those are the things that we're going to have to take from this to develop to make sure we have a strategy to get that done. So this is the foundation for creating that strategy, which falls in line with what you're saying. Yes, it is a foundation, page 74 especially. <laughs> um, earthquake continuing, seismic shutoff continuing. So it sounds like some things have been done or, or being thought about. So um, yeah, that's the foundation, right? This is our roadmap. Right. So these are all the projects that we need. We need 20 million bucks. And it's how much grants, how much we can fund. Well, obviously, again, we're not in that because these are threat infrastructure um, and being able to deliver water, gotta be some money out there for that. You would think. Well, one thing is we have things in Congress, but as an example, all the monies uh, leveraging those community directed funded. So we can, those are like million, million and a half potential over a period of years, depending on how long we can take care of this. We may be able to get that's That's just one example of areas that we could potentially look at to receive some funding. So we need to really put together a plan to accomplish from this foundation. Okay. All right, well, um, that's on the record. So that's that's my only comment on it. Like I said, 50 pages of a lot of stuff. From a perspective, and I haven't looked, and I apologize for that, but this will kind of be on the project list. We're not gonna lose this. It's not gonna slip behind the desk someplace. We're gonna keep working on this. But I would say absolutely it needs to get on that project list. Uh, it's a, it's a short so I have a couple of things under the uh, department information items. Uh, I kind of thought that we were going to have the sewer connection compliance uh, as a agenda item and this Election project update. I don't see those on the agenda, so I'm hoping in the future. That, that was the intent. There was just a bit of a misunderstanding. Did plan those as part of the project list. So get to there. Let's give the board the opportunity to speak to those. So I will be updating both of those. Ron will give a pre-update on the connections. 
give a bit, bit of an update on that. And, the, and just uh, as a reminder, I believe both of those having extensive updates next uh, at the next meeting, including the closed session. Thank you. So with that, I think we will move on to item seven, director's reports and comments. Thank you. All right. Director Statham, please. Oh, okay. I attended the regular monthly meeting at Association of Santa Rosa Public Special Meetings, the Canada Valley Water District. And boy, uh, I, I wasn't so sure it was just going to be another one of those uh, talks for dinner that I would uh, have to prop my eyes open. Uh, after eating a whole bunch. Uh, John Gillison, who is the city manager of the city of Rancho Cucamonga, was the speaker. And he spoke about a uh, high speed rail with Cucamonga Station being one end and Las Vegas being the other end, and a public private uh, company. Uh, Private company uh, that has done similar already. Uh, we'll be putting this in, and they're they're only a month or two away from final environmental approval. It's essentially going to run down the middle of I-15 on raised pedestals because the thing's going to go 230 miles an hour. If it's at the same ground level as cars, when a train goes by at 230 miles an hour, there's a bit of a prop wash. Anyway, uh, it, the, we've heard talk about some kind of a high speed rail that California would be planning between LA and San Francisco. It seems like for decades, it seemed like uh, you know, an awful lot of money for not sure what we it out of it and it would get put off in a like a government boondoggle type of project this what it sort of seemed like to me so what a surprise to find out that there's a private company that's already doing this kind of high-speed rail in florida this that's the original concept so uh high-speed rail appears to be coming to um California and the high desert and it's going to have one stop between Rancho Cucamonga and Las Vegas the stop at the far north end of the strip and it's up to Las Vegas to extend the monorail but it'll also have one stop in Apple Valley so if you want to take a high-speed train to Las Vegas you only know, going to drive over to Apple Valley or it sounds like this is actually going to be going forward in the short run and not in the long run. And this was real uh, groundbreaking could be in a, in a month or two and construction, they hope they have to done within a couple of years. Wow. We will yeah. get there much quicker, spend your money faster. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. impressive. I, I'm, I was just, everybody in the room was just, wow. Um, I got this uh, ballot, time sensitive uh, ballot from SDRMA addressed to Bob Statham, a board president. So they seem to be a little behind the times. Wanting to know if we wanted to nominate anyone for the SDRMA uh, board of directors. So I'm not sure who I would give this to to Pass see if we want to that. do anything. If we've got anybody uh, that uh, we might like to support for that position, and that's all I have. Look at Mays, please. Uh, I don't have anything to say. I said in the comp. I have something. <laughs> um. I viewed a recording of the town of Yucca Valley Planning Commission meeting and uh, the town of Yucca Valley's uh, legal counsel reviewed new Brown Act teleconferencing requirements that will that came into effect January 23rd. I'll get to those back to those just in a minute. Um, 
Also on the planning commission agenda were requested approvals for 20 native plant permits for sewer connections, which they approved. Um, so that's good news to hear all these new approvals. What I was surprised about though, is that a couple of them were commercial properties, including a restaurant. Um, I think all the restaurants would have been hooked up by now, but since they're not, or that one isn't anyway, um, you know, when we figure a, a, a monthly service charge for residential, that's 40 some dollars, a restaurant's probably gonna be a lot more than that. So we might be seeing, I'm thinking we're gonna be seeing a lot more revenue as a result of a restaurant hooking in. Does that sound probably accurate? You know who it is? I believe it was uh, IHOP, I believe. So their, their EDUs are, you know, are, yeah. So hopefully that'll translate into some extra money to, for our sewer plant. Um, we zoomed into the January 26th Mojave Water Agency meeting. They also had on their agenda an overview of the Brown Act remote meeting requirements. We're beginning March 1st, 2023, AB 361, the governor's state of emergency pandemic rule, which we've been operating on, that will go away. I believe that's correct. Okay. Uh, however, now, well, so what will happen is we will have the traditional uh, require, Brown Act requirements where you post on the agenda, you're at a remote location, say you're in Las Vegas, um, the hotel, you have to post at the hotel, make a public meeting room. Uh, meeting needs to be audio open to the public so that they can participate in the meeting. So that will, that will remain. Then there's some new things, just cause or emergency circumstances has its own set of requirements um, and some restrictions. You can only do that a couple of times a year. Uh, but I know there was some talk, maybe we needed to get with BB and K to help explain all this, but between the town of Yucca Valley and they've had a, a PowerPoint, Mojave Water Agency, they had a PowerPoint. I think we could probably get by with, if we need to review it, just go to their agenda and we can look at it and save all that money. We don't need to have BB and K, uh, BB and K tell us uh, what we should always be able to figure out. Um, let me go down on this. I didn't bring my whole list here. I think summaries. Hobby also had a presentation from Raftelis for the strategic financial plan uh, that will assist MWA in coping with future financial implications that include Department of Water Resources operational and aging infrastructure cost increases, future Delta conveyance costs, future water purchases to recharge groundwater basins and aging MWA infrastructure. Um, the financial plan is projected through the year 2032. And then I had one key takeaway from that. Raftelis recommended that that financial model be periodically updated, have a look at it. And it made me think of our 2019 rate study. And I wonder if, when we do rate studies, if we should have periodic updates to find out if we've actually hit our numbers and our assumptions. I don't think we did that this last go around. So, you know, did we hit our numbers? Did we miss? If we missed, why did we miss? We know inflation happened, but did that, how much did that affect us? Really? We don't know. So, um, Raftelis did our 2019 ref rate study. And since their representative at Mojave Water Agency did this presentation, I'm thinking, okay, well, uh, if we happen to use them again, or if not, I don't think it would be a bad thing to periodically look at our rate study, find out if we hit our numbers. That's something for the future. And I just wanna mention uh, the town's planning commission meeting. That was for my own information. I did not attend as a representative of the water district. I just wanted to hear what was going on with the, uh, the permit uh, for the sewer. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Got Is that it. brief? Get him a new shovel. Yeah, he probably did one of those. He probably did it. You gonna give me a shovel? Director Sita, for your brief comments, we're gonna take one of those shovels down if you don't dent it. You can show me how to use it. Director I, Sita. All I have to do is, is apologize for not being able to join you on the uh, internet. People were out there with their trucks three days in a row, and I don't think it ever got any better. 
All right. So item eight, manager report, director of services, Ron. Thanks, President Huff. Uh, so I was going to um, update the technical connection again. Um, so as of Monday, we had 3,880 connections. But if you remember my previous report, I like to talk about parcels as it relates to the um, initial identified number from the assessment district engineer's report. Um, out of the 44, 4,403 that were originally identified, as of Monday, there was 401 remaining. Um, if you remember, in, um, on the 18th, I reported that the number for January 3rd was 444. So we're down significantly. Um, also, um, the state is continuing to send out the notice of violations for properties, as well as work with staff. They're continuing to work together to, to get properties connected. Um, in addition to these numbers, um, Ryan and I spoke. He is confident that there's at least 80 to 100 parcels that what I want to call are in due diligence. So they're somewhere in the process. They've even they've either applied for funding from the water district or they're waiting their permit from the town or they're working on getting their harvest report or they're waiting on their contractor. So considering that, um, you know, it's reason it's confident to say, you know, we're we're looking at 300, staring 300 in the face. Yeah, so um, that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mace, any comments, please? Uh, yeah. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Mr. Markey, who uh, gave us uh, input at our super tour. And uh, I encourage the people that to get to the meetings. And I want to get to the meeting again. Thank you, Mike Hayward. For his 31 years of service and rest over to the position as purchase agent. We appreciate them and we appreciate all of our staff here. Very, very important. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Or... No, those are great numbers. Um, 4,403, and we're going to look at face. That's like amazing. And it was something said. I don't know, maybe I mentioned this already. There was something said by uh, somebody on the public advisory committee that, that works for another water agency and saying, you've got only 10% of the people that are not hooked up. That's an it's really an amazing number. You know, it's easy to get hung up on the ones that aren't hooked up, but we really got to look at all the ones that did hook up. That's an amazing, it's just an amazing number. Like, who would have ever thought that people would have would have done that? You know, willingly, and so yeah, um, it's going to make our job a lot easier. Well, Dr. Sid, do you have any questions at all? No. Dr. Sid, do you have any questions? Yes. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> to learn how to live it. <laughs> Ron, I get asked, and you may not know the answer, but I think it would be nice if we could get the answer. What is the arborist charge per tree or for whatever it is? People are always asking this question. I think there's some significant numbers. You know, somebody said, well, it's like $10,000, get the arborist out there. And somebody's saying, no, it's $1,000. So if we could get a, I think that would be a nice thing to let our customers know what that is per tree for coming out the first time. Or <clears throat> I think that can be, that might be a little bit of a, Roadblock and in, in, in people understanding why well, I can't have this guy out because it's it's real expensive. So thank you, Director of Public and Government Affairs Jen Jennifer Chiza. Um, good evening and thank you. Um, I do want to share that on three eight, the Fish and Game Commission will be considering the Western Joshua Tree. Uh, so we'll be a meeting where I will monitor that meeting remotely. Um, February 8th, it's on their agenda. And if you would like a copy, I can send you one. Um, also, uh, the state deadline for you know state bills legislation is February 15th. So you know, we should know 
on the 15th that or shortly thereafter, kind of what the makeup of most of the bills looks like. Um, let's see, CSDA, we are hosting the June 19th CSDA meeting and we have secured a speaker, Supervisor Don Rao, um, and we'll be um, hosting it hopefully at the golf course here at Hawks Landing. Also, we're working on May tour dates, um, or not May, but spring tour dates. So we will be publicizing those soon, tour dates for the public um, not here soon. So that's exciting. We did get the last newsletter out. Thank you to Cody. She did a great job in putting that together in-house. It saved a lot of money doing that in-house. And thank you all for your um, review and feedback on that. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I do want to just, I guess, call out Tanya um, and, and say um, she really has done an amazing job um, with our SRF financial package. Um, since I've started, you know, that was kind of a big, a big lift for our staff and we've all been working on it, but I'm just really proud of her efforts um, because um, I think without us taking this initiative and having Tanya do what she did, we wouldn't have made the January 31st deadline. And um, so I think we're, we have a good shot at grant funding. Thank you. And I'm going to take over for Cody now. She's not Cody. Goodbye, Cody. That's all I have. Thank you. Chief Finance Officer Tanya Gruel, please. Um, this afternoon, after financial package or whatever, I'm just kind of playing catch up, getting all the financial stuff up and running for the next quarter and all that. And that will be coming to you guys um, on the March 1st meeting and then. Next meeting, I have a lot of reports that I'll be providing their agenda items. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And Assistant General Manager, Tom McCulver, please. Thank you. I just had a couple updates on the, uh, the priority project list. Um, CRP is plugging away according to our, our schedule here. Uh, the Front Western Hills Booster Station, they'll be getting that grant. So we actually started last week uh, potholing and figuring out what size pipe we need so we can get some outlets for a temporary pump there. So we actually did start on that. So hopefully it's not as loud as Scott's. And then uh, well nine, um, we're having a, a delay with the contractor. They have a, a, the lane is not the contractor that does the actual block it off of the well. There's another contractor there. they're having a hard time getting them out. So. As soon as they get that out, we'll get that done. Uh, well, seven, we're waiting on quotes um, so we can bring that to the engineering committee and see how they want to move forward with that. Uh, County Upper Valley Recycled Water, uh, got West Coast Civil working on a scope and an engineer's estimate so we can bring that to um, New shop, uh, I know Mike and, Wes, or Mike and Vince are getting bids on, on that building, so they're, they're trying to get the best product. Uh, eight, that building. It's 18 feet. So it's 18. 18. And then uh, if I ask, skip on the, the stormwater capture for groundwater replenishment is uh, also in West Coast hands. And they're working on a scope for that. And then solar improvements, uh, NG contacted us and they have a pretty good program. So we're, I'm going to meet with them next week. Going to do a site visit, and everything they do, everything they do is pro bono, and they they say they do it that way because they almost guarantee you to use them because they're so good. So we'll see. I like them. I liked our first initial contact with them, and it seemed like it so. And also, that 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 would help with our backup generator because it would be instead of a generator, we'd have batteries here, so we it would be solar charged batteries and. So that that hopefully will take the place of our generator. So, do you have any qualifying questions, Tony? I'd like to say I really appreciate tremendously you going through the project. Looks like you're doing it makes it simple to follow, and I, I really appreciate the format that you brought this time. So I really like that. Yeah, what is your key? Yeah, Jennifer did a real good job of updating this. So, so thank you for doing that because I really like that format. 
And general manager, Paul Pichelle, please. So if I could, I would like to do two general updates under item eight. And then on the next item, two additional updates on that under the actual project list. And, and again, if the board has any questions on that, it's completely open to questions. And I, that's the end. I'll actually three MW agreements, phase two, phase three, and the remaining phase one actions, uh, a bit of a more update. So just two updates under the, uh, the report. One is uh, just uh, bring conclusion to this. So at the January 10th, 2023, Colorado River uh, State or Regional Meeting, uh, the public hearing was held and they did approve the six month extension for completion and submission of a technical report, <coughs> excuse me, and work plan regarding the adequacy of the existing groundwater monitoring network ever since last week I've had this cough so I apologize for the wastewater reclamation plan. They also uh, have delegated if necessary future future extensions uh, through the executive officer so it doesn't have to go through this process. Receive formal notice of that on the 19th, the day after the last board meeting. Also attended the uh, MWA executive TAC meeting yesterday. The, the primary focus there was a review of their legislative policies. They never before had led the legislative policy. They had good discussion. They actually talked about the legislative policies and guidelines that we have. Out of that, gave them some recommendations to help streamline their process. I believe going forward, we'll be able to leverage them more. Uh, so I'll just say we're going to take a look at how we're approaching the legislative process. We'll leave it at that for now. Um, just wanted to also give a reminder, uh, Cody did send out a, a list of several conferences that are coming up, the Urban Water Institute, Spring Water Conference, CSDA Special District Leadership Academy, CSD, CSDA Annual Conference and Exhibitor Showcase, and both uh, the Spring and Fall Conference for Aqua. So just take a look at that if board members are interested in attending any of those. So that's what I have for here. Again, I'd like to update the other ones under the list. And then there are some future agenda or item things that I'd like to provide an update on that too when you get to that item. So uh, did you want to go to the next? I think so. I think everybody comfortable moving on. Except yes, please go ahead. So uh, that, that is my item uh, under the uh, future board agenda items. So with the MW agree agreements, uh, some of this is a reminder, but MW is proposing, proposing two agreements to replace the 1991 agreements. And the agreement recommendations are a conditions agreement. Yeah. We've indicated the purpose of that is logistics and commitments for use of the pipeline between the project participants and the owner operator, which is MWA. Also a governance MOU. <laughs> To get the purpose to be communication, oversight, and responsibility of all project participants and the Morongo Basin Pipeline Commission. So uh, I wouldn't say a whole lot has occurred, but MWA did provide a draft and they titled it Water Supply Connections Agreement Morongo Basin, Basin Pipeline Term Sheet. Basically, right now, that's just kind of a bullet, bullet list that delineate, delineates 13 items. It hasn't been discussed. It's just been provided. Uh, but we will be having an IDM managers meeting on February 27th, where I'm hoping that really kicks things off and gets things going. And just as, as a reminder and update, we have reviewed numerous documents and additional historical documents related to this and that we've been able to accumulate up to this point. So I think we're sitting on a good foundation. Uh, <clears throat> we've had some discussions and exchange of information internally with staff. Uh, we're continuing to meet and dialogue among the GMs from Bighorn Desert View Water Agency, Joshua Basin Water District, and uh, also involved 29 Palms Water District, but we do need to be careful there if it gets into things that are more sensitive but we feel it's still good to en en engage Matt on that. Uh, we also did obtain some legal perspective on it. I thought that was good because just to some questions that have arisen, so it's, it's helped in that foundation. So 
The intent is to engage the board once we have information and our materials of sufficient substance, which I'm hoping will happen here on the 27th. Uh, with that said, the general intent is to approach the agreement process collaboratively. I don't think we want to uh, start out this in any way confrontationally with, with, with a goal of ensuring that our rights under the current 1991 agreement are maintained with changes focused on clarifications and agreed to modifications, additions, and deletions. So that's a quick summary on the MW, I don't know how quick it was, but it was a summary on the MWA agreements. Well, can, do we stop there? Do we have yes, if any questions or from the public, I guess, or? No, just that. Okay. Oh, sure. Um, and may I just clarify that we are actually still on the projects list. This is listed on the projects list. Um, I, I thought. Yes, we were... there, yes, we are on the project list. Now. Okay, I know. I just wanted to clarify for the minutes. And... I thought we moved on to uh, director's comments. No, we're, we're... But we were past director on ours. I went over a couple of items and then we moved to 9 yeah. So we are on 9A. Nine. Nine. Okay. Anyway. Sorry. So if we have some disqualifying questions, I think we would. Happy with that. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, did you ask if there are questions from the public? I, I we've never done that at this point in time. <laughs> or action items usually, but, but oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I that okay. thank you. Thank you. Well, we can we can do that. We can go ahead and ask a question. There's usually not a spot for public comment at this point in time because this is uh, this is not a discussion time. This is not a uh, action time. So I don't um, know. From a perspective, I would think that the that's a quick question. I I don't want to, We can ask a qualifying question, but we we don't want to get into a dialogue or a conversation at this point in time because it's not an agenda item. Okay. Have um, a question, but there cannot be any dialogue. Okay, I understand. Um. There's some questions around the, I'm just asking a question. There's some questions around the Joshua trees from the public and they've come up and asked about like, I don't know, originally I know in my property, like if something was gonna be, had to be removed or something, some type of protected plant, it was 10 feet that you had to maintain. But then I've been hearing like 300 feet and all these different measurements. so. Maybe at some point, if that could be addressed, I, I know a lot of people would really appreciate that. I think we're going to address that, and I, Paul, I'm going to give you can give a quick answer to that if it, you can't because those things change all the time. We don't exactly mm -hmm. know. Paul, do you have the latest that we can answer her question? <laughs> well, if, I, if I could suggest this, um, it doesn't really apply to that, and this is a, an agendized item, and I will be speaking to that in the third item and going over okay. in terms of the sewer connections. So I will speak to that briefly in context on that. Thank you, Dad. So, so I hope you don't believe that we're trying not to have the uh, transparency here, but we're trying to follow a, a protocol that uh, the state has set around that. So I do understand that. Thank you so much. Okay. Earlier informed the state. Oh, God. A little careful here. We'll Department get it. is going to come up with a ruling on February 8th. Correct. So um, go ahead, Paul. Well, it, if I could, Please. let me speak to that and that in the context of when I'm going over the remaining sewer connections, because I think in terms of how the item is agendized, that would be most appropriate. Okay. So I, will, I will speak to both of those. And after I do, if there's follow-up questions, those are warranted. So uh, are there any more questions on the MW? A agreements. I, oh, Scott, yes, please. Thank you for that. Um, it's important, I think, that we stay absolutely on top of the issues we have, you know, an agreement. And what you said about we're partners with MWA. So, yeah, anything adversarial won't work. And there's no reason for that either, especially when you read the book, The History of the Mojave, that was on our desk last week and all the consternation that happened for the past 50 years, 60 years, uh, back and forth and trying to agreements, what have you. So um, I'm happy to hear that we're, we're, has there been any indication as to make say, well, you said, I think February what, 27th. 27th is when so Any ideas like when they might want to say, kind of come to some conclusions and we sit down and look at paperwork and maybe sign some things or, I mean, like a year, 
nine months? Has there been any indications at all? I've I've asked some questions uh, on that previously, and can't say I got a really solid answer because they're really just pulling things together. And so what they have developed since that time was a that those draft points at this really kind of high level thing that just indicated the two agreement categories, and they had a. Uh, I think I. Well, if I could, again, we don't want to get in a really yeah, yeah. discussion. Just it's just it's really good news, and um, thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm, so it, things are moving. I'm, I'm hoping on the 27th, more solid moving okay. forward, better. Good enough. So we're still general manager report. So please go. It's technically under 9A. Okay. Projects, but, um, so we do, we'll kind of skip that down there so we know we're in 9A too. And, and that way it's under an agenda. And so the questions are, so phase two, phase three status, I wanted to give an update on that. And uh, and some of this was mentioned pre previously, but I think it's good to put it in context. So we did submit the complete SRF application to the state in the hopes of obtaining 100% grant funding for the project. That included the general, the environmental, technical, and financial pad package. And it's a, Important under to not understate uh, the collaborative work effort among staff in ensuring that completion. I mean, it, it was really key. And I, I want to add to what Jennifer said because I, really it was a Herculean effort. And with the risk of undermining the significant work of other team members, I really want to bring special attention to the work and effort of Tanya. It was really amazing. Uh, the that financial package was completed nearly solely by her. And without her diligent effort, we would have not met the January 3rd first deadline and not even been aware of that deadline. And that deadline was critical as it places High Desert Water District in the first queue in consideration of the 100% fund. Now, staff efforts by Tony, Tanya, Ron, Jennifer, and Ryan have really put us in the best position for the possible maximizing of that grant funding. And I don't want to understate how critical that was. Uh, also, as a reminder, we previously posted a request for qualifications for a progressive design bill to establish a short list of qualified candidates. That request for qualifications is a preliminary step to develop a short list of potential contractor and design and a design build team that's interested and qualified to be invited for the RFP. So it's an initial stage. And if no firms respond or none are considered uh, qualified, it's unlikely that we'd use that approach uh, or that it could be considered an option. And again, there's no obligations associated with the RFQ and that delivery method. Now, if the, the firms do respond to the RFQ and a review of qualifications results in a short list of qualified candidates, our intent is to come back to the board later this month or early next month to present a fixed price design build, design bid, a build, and progressive design build as options. So all of the uh, three options. Uh, and from that, we recommend to issue an RFP, RFP, as I mentioned, to the short list of candidates for the progressive design build approach. And the reason for that is if, if we do find a qualified candidate, it's the only option and our best option to meet the tight timeline of December 31st, 2025 for com the completion deadline. We have the potential to receive the 100% funding. So a lot of moving parts, but again, uh, the efforts by the team and in particular Tanya and this financial package have put it as in this potential position. So our current understanding is it'll take the state nine to 12 months to determine how much funding and what type of funding we'll receive. The current project estimate is $180 million. Uh, we need grant funding, we estimate of at least $115 million for that to be in line with the phase one assessments. Ideally, we could get full funding, but that's kind of a minimum we'd be looking for. Uh, we also are going to be inquiring with the state for understanding the process going forward if possible. Sometimes they're a little bit hesitant to give you that, but we're going to see if we can get that. And today, uh, again, with Jennifer's efforts and the team's efforts, we advertised uh, the RFP for the owner's representative. 
attempt is to hire an owner's representative irrespective of the, the delivery method. And once responses are received for that owner's representative RFP, staff will return to the board with an action item and associated staff recommendations. So with that, questions are welcome. I know I just threw a lot at you. So I'm gonna start with reclamation, the owner, reclamation. Um, I think that's wonderful progress. It's obviously that uh, there has to be a plan um, and potential that there could be diversions along the way, but I think you're covering the basis. And uh, I just am so thrilled with our staff uh, that, and the fine job that they've done to get this in. I know what it was difficult the last time. Uh, we didn't, we had uh, outsiders do it. This time we're for our staff to step up and to, to take a risk, and they did it, and that's awesome. Thank you. Sir, can say them, please. We're on the uh, agenda item. Not quite. No, we're, we're on still on 9A. Projects. Projects. 9A. Vice President Paul. Thank you. We're good. President. Good. Way to go, Tanya. I hope that toffee helped. <laughs> give me that extra juice. <laughs> right? A little sugar. And your last food. No, hold on. I, oh, I got a question. Go ahead. Um, and I ask this question, I think, every time when you bring up requests for qualifications. Uh, have any firms responded? <laughs> You're just standing at three. Three? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Three. Yeah. yeah I think. Two dates. It's not even due to them. I think well, we have, I mean, we had three contractors show up to our, our well, that's pre true. Pre meeting, yeah. So, three potentials actually, but they, they had intentions of submitting. I, th I think what I was told, the deadline has not yet arrived. And so, but I'm wondering if anybody has actually, so maybe they showed up for the walkthrough, but I wonder if they. As much as, much as I looked at this, I can't remember the deadline. Do we do anybody know the deadline at the time they're approving? Next Thursday. Three express kids. So at the following board meeting, we'll have the additional, right? Okay. So uh, three of ex twelve for the board. So three have expressed interest, but has anybody actually submitted any paperwork? Well, and I understand the deadline hasn't got here yet. I know of one for a fact that's going to submit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think whenever you mention this, you say, and if nobody responds, then we go to Plan B. But so I'm and even if they respond, if we don't deem them qualified. So, okay. just need to keep going through those steps. Thank you. Uh, no. Go staff. Okay. So with that, we'll go on to. Can, I, I got. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. So this is the uh, phase one sewer connections oh. additional update. So I, I just like to mention this: if we get down to the 300, that is fewer than seven percent remaining. Just want to give the figure there uh, as an additional <laughs> update to. Arms information. We originally intended to have an extensive update today, along with closed session item, um, to ensure proper preparation because we're working with legal on some things. Uh, that's been moved to the 15th. So next week we'll provide a more extensive update. Um, and as noted, uh, customers continue to connect, which is really, really good. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as we've contacted, we've encouraged using. Uh, the funding process and them getting in the queue early because there is beginning to be a bit of a construction backlog. So staff will also be sending from a proactive standpoint uh, another letter shortly. We also spoke with the regional uh, regional board. They indicated they are reviewing all unconnected properties and working on a plan to begin enforcement actions just to you know, update on that. And we'll, we will be meeting with them again fairly shortly. Uh, we're just trying to nail down a date with them. Uh, so during the February 15th meeting, the board will be provided options for addressing those that have not connected. Um, and the board may choose one or one of those options or something else. Uh, and there will be a closed session associated with that. So uh, again, if you have any uh, further questions on that, uh, we good. Just one. Yes, just, just one. Yeah. Would you say some options, you know, for the folks that don't hook up? Questions if the advisory can get in on that 
as part of the discussion? Um, we could ask them to attend the board meeting. I mean, I'll see what that couldn't be. If that's what you're, you couldn't come to a close session. No, 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 not the closed session. I'm just as, as as we go on, you know, say a year from now, and we still have a few people that aren't hooked up, and we're looking for solutions. Um, maybe they might have some ideas. Well, we can bring this up at the public advisory committee. I, I thought maybe you're suggesting having them come to the board oh. at the closed session. And if if I could. I forgot to update on those nuances. <laughs> so with regard to the Joshua tree in this, um, as things currently are, the current uh, city's uh, requirements. And so that is not the 300 foot distance anymore. It's basically using an arborist. And if the arborist determines that there is no damage, then you can move forward. It doesn't matter how close or far. So hopefully that, Clarifies that. Um, Scott, attending the planning commission meeting, I'm not going to get into a long discussion here, but you can read the arborist reports. And you can see that trees are pretty close to where they're digging, and he will make a recommendation what to do to protect the tree, move along. There's none of this 300 foot stuff, so I don't even know where that comes from. Probably, well, it, it was at one time, but that went away. Um, you could remind me of your question, Bob, related to this. Oh, no, actually, uh, uh, you have answered my question in terms of having discussion on options for us uh, having some kind of so again, we want to be really careful we yeah. don't get into okay. dialogue. So no. I think we're pretty solid. Is that yeah. would that be correct? Sure. Okay, thank you. So that completes the updates under 9A. And when you get to 10, there are some things I'd like to update in that area too. Okay. So 10 is upcoming agenda items. And I think uh, Vice President McCone, uh, I don't know. I kind of know what you're asking. Kind of something on this rate in our marks. If that's something that uh, we could actually see, uh, what he means by that is we have the rate steady. Are we falling way behind on the budget, or would you like to bring that as agenda item up? It it, it is listed, and we are providing an agenda item on the fifteenth. Okay, super. That's for the new rate study that's going to be commissioned, correct? I mean, the, the comparisons oh. from the rate study to where we were for the past five years. Okay, so you're I, asking something different. Well, I didn't know. I did mention earlier here tonight that Rift Tellus uh, doing the MWA strategic, uh, financial strategic plan that he recommended that they do periodic updates. And I thought, well, it might be a little late for us to do an update. And, I mean, although it might not be a bad thing to ask Rift Tellus if they would look at it. Was, I so, but in addition to that, we are getting ready to commission a rate study, which I was actually going to ask for. But you said there's going to be an update on that on the 15th. Well, the update is on you going over what you asked from a ref to the standpoint, and the idea is for her to go over that okay. and see if it answers the uh, board's questions. Um, and so, if it doesn't, we could look at something further. In addition to that, uh, we have met internally to look at the schedule to make sure we can timely complete the rate study to inform the next year's budget. Um, and so I would say let's take this as a step and we'll see if there's any uh, things that still remain and have Tanya go through her presentation on the 15th. Thanks. Okay. That's in regards to the 2019 rate study, yes? Okay. Then the next agenda item would be the rate study that we are going to commission that will probably yeah. concurrently yeah. with the salary study. Yes, there will be some overlap. Um, the salary or the compensation study has already begun. Um, we're kind of estimating that we hope to have things before the board. Well, I, I would say within the next month or two, depending on the timing of getting the RFP out, getting to the board having the board make a decision. Uh, so the goal is to have that done 
specifically by January 17th of 2024, so it can help the budget process move forward. Okay, okay. so hold on. Okay, so um, a little. Gotta be careful with discussion. Go ahead. Okay, so Coffin Associates is doing this current salary study, yes? Yes. They projected that they would start about this time and be done about June or something. Okay. Okay. So are we going to be also having a rate study done concurrently so that come about June, that rate study could be completed? I mean, if we get started now. Well, there, there'll be overlap. This is a future agenda item. And yes. next, on the 15th, okay. there will be a full discussion. Agenda item, not for the not for the rate study to be looked at from 2019, uh, the rate study that we need to commission. And it's both. The one on the 15th will be both. Okay. Forward and backward. Right. backward okay, forward. Uh, and that isn't... We That's what to, we know. That we, okay. we've you just need to clarify that as it's written in the future agenda. You good? Yeah. So we got to be really careful about getting into the weeds. You had some other things, Paul, you wanted to... Um, so. Yeah, just real quickly and... and I don't want to be redundant here, but uh, just just to kind of clarify in terms of how we're looking at things and trying to be on top of things. So over the last several weeks, the board's asked for updates and several items, and we do work from various internal documents. And so once we have sufficiently assessed those efforts to complete the items and assess the relative priority, we establish dates and deadlines, and we we use a document that we call the agenda planning. Um, so what we've done to create more clarity is we've added, added the date yes, thank for you. this meeting in there. That we were doing it internally, but we hadn't included it there. So that's, I think, an improvement. Um, so for item one, we didn't have a date in there. We have clarified that. That will be March 22nd. So adding that date in there. And just quickly for items four, three, four, five, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, that includes the expanded use loan, the credit card service fees, vacation rental rules, the MWA agreements, the rate study, and the lobbying agenda. Those will all be on the 15th, at a full meeting on the 15th. In addition uh, to those items noted on the 15th, the reserve policy is scheduled for the 15th and MWA's rate presentation on April 5th. Just a couple items that we're going to add to the list. We'll have a human resource staffing item. It's scheduled for March 22nd. A list of PAC members by district will be scheduled for the 15th. So that will be next uh, meeting. Strategic plan is scheduled for a board workshop on March 1st. We also are looking at, at a financial progress report because that was requested. Um, we'll be getting uh, uh, back to the board on that just for clarification on the crest relative to current efforts, uh, so a date will be uh, determined. Um, this is something else that the board had brought up as an agenda, future agenda and consideration of lump sum pay, payment. That'll be handled as part of the financial, so we make so we look at it from a budget, a financial standpoint, so that's scheduled for March, or March 1st. So hopefully I didn't throw too much at you, but that means we're going to add one, two, three, four, five items to the list. Many of those will fall off next week because the majority of those will be addressed next week. That's a full schedule. So, you know, I'd like to, I'm going to interrupt the other board members a little bit. You know, I'd like to say both for Tony and you, Paul, to present these items where we're having dates where you're actually going through them. Uh, you look at them and it kind of can be a little overwhelming when you kind of look at that to try and figure that and, and for you to take the time and kind of go through them like you're doing. I really appreciate that. And I hope the other board members do that too because there's just so much going on and, and having dates are, are my big deal in life. So I really want to thank you for stepping up and and helping us. I think it's a really great thing staff is doing. So that's just me, but I like dates and I like the way you're inputting your information to us. So, yeah. so any other board comments? Please? Yeah, one, just one short one. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, get to show. I apologize that I see the previous Raftelis study. I just now saw that. So apologize that I did not see that earlier. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. If there's nothing else, I'd like to thank you. This went really, really well. Again, 
for me, the way you're doing the project update and the gen update is really important. It really keeps the board informed of what's going on. So, team, team effort, great team. Well, that's I'm directing that team. I really appreciate that. And so at 524 and 51 seconds, shall we adjourn? Yes, sir. Thank you very much.